Hey, 164 scale modifiers. So finally gonna talk about these Carlomo alloy wheels, uh, in particular the top line S-Class wheels. The reason why I haven't bought these before is they're really expensive. They cost as much as a decent die cast car. But I'm running out of cars to collect, so I, I definitely know I have some models that have uh, junky wheels that could use an upgrade. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, like the S-Class, they're full-on, complete, multi-piece wheels. This all looks like metal, except for the tire, of course. That's pretty impressive, actually. Even the little center cap there. So here are the designs. A mesh, a five-spoke, six-spoke, and multi-spokes. These look like TE37s. Those look like CE28Ns by Ray's. Probably the most popular tuner wheels. And then they have some lower-grade ones. Uh, this, this numbering one... Uh, they're just flat. They look flatter, but they are photo etched metal. And then you have a version with disc brakes behind them, but they also look pretty flat, like photo etched metal. So the, I mean, they still look cool and all, but uh, not compared to these that have three-dimensional spokes. Like they're literally conical. You know, they're they're moving in three dimensions, not just flat. All right, so let's take a closer look at some of these things here. Uh, I decided, well, these, well, I guess I'll open all of them. There's a staple holding them together. And then you got some sort of axle tubes here in the back. Uh, let me get a different angle here, get this closer to myself as well. Uh, all right. And the, it says 9.5 millimeters. I'm pretty sure that's the actual tire diameter because that's what actually matters, getting it into a model. That staple is industrial. Okay, so actually there's an extra, or the, actually it was quite interesting. There's four long tubes and there's two small tubes. And oddly, the, that bag isn't actually sealed. <laughs> so if you open this thing, do it over a table or a tray, because if it goes into your carpet, you'll probably never find it again. So these are like six spokes, like the T37s, and I went with the uh, ones that look kind of like bronze, like T37s. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I gotta really get in on this, fo this zoom in here. Ah, oh, boy, that's really... Man, it is focused on there, but it's still hard to... Let me hold it back here. Hold it right there, and now I'll zoom in. Look at this. I mean, that's... those... Okay, so the spokes aren't CNC'd. I think they're just bent sheet metal. But... They still look pretty good. I mean, they're not flat, so that's the key thing. Oh, sorry, I came as I was getting knocked around. Look at the disc brake. Uh, the, the cross drilling. And then the actual brake caliper. Look at that, actually. The disc brake actually spins independently of the wheel. <laughs> That's, it's so smooth. It's pretty amazing. Anyways, yeah, the caliper is very three-dimensional. looks real. And then you have lug nuts actually sticking out. Sticking out quite a bit, you know? So this is definitely a step above photo etch pieces. Photo etch, you just can't get that kind of depth. Well, people don't do it or something because it probably takes time. Then the center cap is also two different heights. That is by far the most realistic looking wheel I've ever seen in this hobby. Uh, better than anything even on a resin uh, model. So, uh, this is all looks brass back here. You can actually see the tiny bearings in there. There's a lot of little bearings there, those round balls there. Very impressive. Wow. And you can also see all the paint on my hands because I'm always making models. Uh, we should probably make sure it is 9.5, right? Yeah, 9.5. Okay, so essentially, you know, you just want to get some vehicles with a wheel wheel bigger than 9.5. So just a random topic here, calipers. These are metal ones I got off AliExpress. They've been quite reliable, this Shahe or Shea uh, brand. 
Uh, so you can measure the inside of a, a car's wheel well using this side. Right? And this is to measure things from the outside inwards. Like my finger is 10 millimeters. I x this off because if you measure here, this is actually not going to be accurate because it's actually not the same plane. Alright. So that is uh, the T37s. You know, that, that would be good on an RX-7, a Skyline, uh, pretty much any Japanese car people are slapping TE37s on because Raze is a Japanese uh, wheel company or Volk Racing if you want to call it that. So all the same tubes and stuff and again it's not it's not heat heated heat shrink together or anything like that so those could be easy to lose and now we have these multi spokes that look more like uh, just photo etch metal but we'll take a look here They're definitely flatter, right? The, the spokes are flat, but they are photo etched. You can see the different uh, grain structure from the etching. But what's nice is the lug nuts and the center cap are still very, very 3D. You know, they're taller than the photo etch, and they're obviously a different color, which makes them really cool. And yeah, same brake system. Looks pretty good. So I can think... Uh, these would be really universal, not only for sports cars, but also just sedans and like VIP uh, look. You know, more, more spokes, more VIP. I don't, I don't know why that is, but that's what I, how my brain works. All right, the last one. You know what's odd? They don't actually tell you what model uh, style it is. It's just, just the same packaging for all of them. But I guess you know, you just look at the actual thing and cheaper to have the same packaging for all the different styles. Alright, so be careful of that bag of tubes. Whoa. Alright, so let's see here. Yeah, these definitely look like CE 2028Ns, which are the lightest forged wheels to my understanding, that are forged aluminum at least. You know, the carbon fiber wheels are probably much lighter. But just like the first one, the spokes are bent, so it's really neat. I'm not sure how they make these. Maybe that's actually like a laser, nah, laser or water jet cut piece of metal, and then they have a stamp, stamping tool that actually they stamp the uh, the bend in the spokes but what I don't understand is how do they get the inside section so three-dimensional I don't know if that can be stamped like see here it's all recessed from the spoke and now we got some blue calipers and a blue hat here holding that rotor on so yeah I thought I'd mix up the colors all right my challenge is to go find some cars now to uh, slap these on and we'll, let's do an install before I forget, I just want to talk about the width of these because that would be important to know as well. So the actual wheel slash tire is like 5.6 millimeters wide, but there's a little bit of a, you know, extension for the actual axle grabber or center section, and that's 6.1 millimeters. So essentially, your model wants to have around a little over six millimeters of under fender, or unless you're going to have the wheel stick outside of the fenders. Okay, so I was wondering if I needed axles, but it turns out these four identical longer pieces are what go into the wheel. So I'm going to just crazy glue those into these wheels here. There's one. Two. So nice tight fits, you know, being all CNC metal, so it makes sense. They've got their tolerances down. And so once those are dried, the two leftover pieces 
are the actual hollow tubes that now those glued in pieces go into. You'll see actually, this is actually a tube, but uh, it's supposed to go like this inside of the vehicle. And so that's what gives you the ability to have different widths of track. Uh, you might have to actually end up cutting some of it off if it too, proves to be too wide. Uh, in fact, let me put two together and bottom them out and then we'll see what the minimum track width would be. Uh, that is it actually right there. I guess I don't even need the tube. I, I do need my calipers. So after this is glued in place, this thing is... Man, this is really hard to do. It's really small. That's around 7.5, I would guess. The intention is, it's really more like 7.6. So you take that and multiply it by two. Now you're talking like 15.2 of track width is the minimum. Uh, the maximum, that's gonna be a little tougher because it really depends how much overlap you're gonna have with this tube here, right? Honestly, you don't even need the tube unless you really want it the tires to roll and look, look at that if you're really into rolling vehicles I know a lot of you guys are uh, this actually might win races because it literally is running on ball bearings so this is probably the fastest wheel you, you, you might be able to buy as far as an aftermarket wheel goes whether or not it's actually faster than a Hot Wheels I don't know Theoretically, it should be because it's metal on metal rolling, you know, but Hot Wheels are pretty slick. Uh, you know, maybe the plastic that Hot Wheels uses in their wheels and the axle produces very little friction. But that that's pretty darn cool, right? The brake caliper stays in place and this thing will just roll. Huh, interesting. Did not expect that. All right, uh, now this is going to be... A, I don't know if this is going to fit this car. This is a uh, Aoshima Grachan Ken Mary Skyline. It's actually a chase, but uh, I've decided I don't care to to keep the original wheels because look at them. They're all blanked off. Aoshima has perhaps the worst wheels in 164. It's either them or TLV. TLV classic cars are also blanked off. But uh whether or not this is going to fit, I don't know. And now look at this, actually. Uh, I might actually have to trim some axle off. See? It's, it's sticking out way too much. First thing I have to do is just test fit this base back in here. And see if this will fit in there. So, if you don't use the center tube, you can adjust camber. You know, assuming that that tube can bend within the actual wheel well properly like it could go camber this way right in fact you don't even need the tube at all just use poster putty as long as you don't want the thing to spin so unfortunately the way they designed this can marry with the you know this angle I can't get the axle to be lower uh, probably in the back I could well let's try it I guess I'll take the rear wheel off Maybe it will work, <laughs> but it yeah that that's a negative or po I think that's considered positive camber, so that's that does look weird, right? That looks very weird. No, I don't I don't think that that's gonna work for me. So no, unfortunately this particular uh, Grachan car you, you can't have tires this big. It's just not gonna work. All right, next up is this Aoshima. It's one of these Abu Night Deca cars. I mean, look at that wheel. That's just so miserable. Why they blanked off those spoke openings? It's really strange. My concern about this one is uh, the width of the tires. Uh, these are, you know, realistic width tires on from Aoshima, but 
these Carlomos seem to be more for supercars. So, but the space is plastic, so uh, I guess I could file it away. I guess that screw doesn't want to come out. Yoshima has an interesting, uh, the interesting method where they trap the axle. It doesn't just rest in the vehicle. I prefer it to just rest in the base because then you could, you know, cut down the uh, opening easier. But this is a little harder to modify. So just looking, right? I mean, you can see the the tire width difference, meaning I'm probably gonna have to shave out some of the base. Luckily, it's plastic. I was looking at some of my TLVs because they have some of the worst wheels in my collections, the, the classic TLVs, but uh, they have metal bases, so I don't want to sit there and dremel out uh, a metal base because you can't take out TLV, take apart TLVs unless you drill the base out. But then, you know, I, I don't feel like doing that. Okay, so let's go back to here. Let's just pop in this guy here and see how it works. Uh, so first of all, well, no, it did fit in that opening. Yeah, see, it's sticking out of the the, the wheel, uh, the fender, I mean. But the overall diameter seems okay. This is a really low-profile tire. It's crazy how, how low-profile it is. It's almost like a one-millimeter thick tire, if I had to guess. All right, so let me pop in the front one as well, because i got to figure out how much material to remove. Ah, the issue with this is, if I remove the material, it's removing the material that's trapping the axle in place. See, right? Essentially, if I remove this thickness right here I'm touching, then it's not going to trap the axle. Um, hmm. It also looks like the width is... Uh, Alright, so yeah, at least the width isn't a, too great of a concern. Oh, it will be a concern because I'm trying to push these wheels inwards because... So I have a suspicion these are originally designed for Hot Wheels, which might be wider since they're not, dis they're not 164s in many cases. But I'm basically going to have to shave down these axles uh, and then uh, take this out. The, I guess the one plus side is I can actually take the center part here let me find one and I can glue this in place so if this this center part is glued here then it doesn't matter if I have this this trapping part because you know the axles are gonna be in that so actually I'm not that concerned now so that's good so let me get some clippers here and uh, yeah let's just clip this out It wasn't my intention to modify this car because I don't really even like this car. But all the other models in my collection actually seem to have decent wheels. Or another problem is uh, a lot of the other cars in my collection, the diameter of the tires is just too different from the diameter of these guys. So, alright, so I know that can go away and now I gotta shave off some of uh, this stuff here. I've reviewed this little nail salon air filter thing. It works all right as long as you keep the thing ab above. It's loud though. see if that works. You don't want to take away too material. Can't add it back easily. 
I'm basically just trying to clear this little piece of extra brass, you know, that uh, is part of the wheel. And, well, maybe it's okay there. I also know I have to glue in those uh, pieces. So, let me uh, get that crazy glue back. This is... Just, uh, if you're curious, you can make one of these very easily. These are sapphire watch faces. On AliExpress, they sell different sapphire replacement watch faces. Uh, you, you might want to get the biggest ones possible. But these are two small ones. And then this black stuff is called polymorph plastic. And you just boil the plastic and then you can mold it in any shape you want. But when it cools off, it is like structurally strong. And so, you know, when you have glass, you can just take a razor blade and clean off the extra super glue after it's dried. So these are my, my glue things. Now, I gotta make sure I don't get any glue in the actual tube. So I'll have to use one of my precious dental picks. I also don't know if, you know, maybe UV glue would be smarter because you can adjust it before you set the UV. I guess I can always break this loose. I didn't put too much glue in there. All right, so let's see here. I'm just gonna do the rear. Oh boy, see, so that, I am gonna have to file down, I think a little bit more of this thing, so. I have to switch tips, I need a sharp point. Seems like there's a little ledge right here. Uh, you know what though, maybe I don't even want that. I think maybe it's possible I might want those axles to rest on that ledge. So in fact, I am gonna break this out. I'm just gonna put the axles on the wheels and then test fit it this way. So in this case, they're not going to roll because uh, they're literally scraping the fender. If I want them to roll, I am going to have to take out that plastic there. Hmm. Not really after the rolling, I just want a little bit of an air gap. Well, it's not really pressed up against the fender, but it, the, the wheels are sticking out still. So I'm gonna have to remove some stuff from the side of the, the base. So let me come back, cause this is taking too long.
so I'm getting a little too much crazy glue on my little sapphire things. So a little scraper gets all that off. You know, sapphire is really, it's really hard to scratch. You'd have to have a diamond or another sapphire in order to scratch that. So no piece of metal to scratch that easily. All right, so a couple notes. Uh, one thing I don't like is these tires are, you know, perfectly smooth. So there's no ridge in the wheel because the tire is so thin. I don't think they could have it. But they're constantly moving left and right on and off the, the wheel. So I would, for me, I'm going to, you know, glue them in place, but on the inside so I don't see any sort of weird glue uh, on the outside of the car. So I just slid the tires off a little bit, a little crazy glue, and one or two spots. Alright, that's good enough. And then I just push the tire back until it hits the outside of the wheel. And hopefully that'll keep it in place. I don't know for sure, but in theory it should. Alright, so let's do the same on this one. Just uh, spin that wheel, get another dab on the other side. Push the tire in until it bottoms out against the edge of the wheel. Alright. So, uh, as far as, you know, spacing is pretty straightforward because I'm putting this on a realistic car, I had to shave down some of the inner axles. So what I did is I just took a Sharpie, but you'll notice, you remember, this is a tube, this aluminum axle. So, yeah, I would just lightly, lightly clamp it because I don't want to crush the tube. If I crush the tube, I'm going to have a harder time getting it into the center tube, right? So then I'll just, you know, mark off like a millimeter or two for this car and then you can use just a hand file because it's aluminum you know if maybe 20 strokes and you'll get that off of course you could use a dremel cutoff wheel as well if you're going to do a bunch of these but it wasn't too painful just using a hand file so then after that i would glue on you know one of the one of the tubes uh and roughly center the thing yeah one of these tubes right so that's what happened here but now you gotta remember the brake caliper doesn't spin with the wheel. So once you glue that one wheel on this side, it would just make sense to glue on the other wheel in the same position. So the brakes are located in the same position. But you can't hold it by the wheel because that thing is moving on ball bearings. You have to hold the axle, you know, like so I would hold the axle in this vertical position for instance flip it around and then try to get that wheel in vertical again after with crazy glue so it's a little bit annoying but you know it's realistic to have the brakes in the same location okay so i already glued this one in place uh, i didn't even glue it i didn't even center in the base very well so i'll try a little bit better this time I don't really know where the calipers are on this particular Nissan. I'm just going to put them inboard towards the doors. Kind of like that, I guess. Maybe they could be a little bit upwards. Uh, boy, there's a lot of tension on this in this groove, so... Alright, there it goes. Yeah, that seems okay, right? It's inboard. That one's a little... See, I didn't align it properly. This one's a little in that upwards position. Where's that? is not it's more vert horizontal but i don't care it's good enough so this time the axle is a little bit centered just right the gap between the plastic so i'm gonna use some display uv glue instead of crazy glue this time what i like about the uv glue is it's soft until you actually hit it with uv so you can move things around just a little dab in the middle and once you think that's all in a good location then you just get a uv flashlight and hit it for like, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds. The glue actually came with a tiny uh, UV light, but uh, I figure a uh, more powerful UV flashlight will cure it faster. Or, well, at least the batteries last longer. This is a AAA battery flashlight. Okay, so that's it there. So does it roll? It rolls with noise. You can actually hear those ball bearings. Interesting. You know, since I have it apart, I'm going to have to repaint this. In fact, I'll go and repaint this one as well. Well, 
So I put the interior piece in and that's causing the base to come out more and so I feel like that rear it's a, that's like a stock ride height but if you want to lower it you can shim it so I'm going to show you how I'm going to shim it. I already did it on the front. <coughs> Pretty simple really. I'm just going to take some packaging plastic you know a thin piece of uh, plastic bar packaging just cut off a sliver of this enough to get into that groove push that down against that plastic all right let's just do a test fit with the interior I don't want to glue that I might actually have to put another shim in there and then pop this back up in here actually that is uh, a little bit lower right Oh, it's literally scraping the uh, body. The front one works fine. Uh, I actually don't like rolling models, but I know you guys do, so I'm trying to make this work for you for you guys. Alright. Oof. Well, this video is a lot longer than I thought it would be. Alright, there you go. And Hot Wheels fans. <laughs> nope, the tire's still scraping. Well, maybe I'll get it right on the next one.
All right, so at least I got two of the wheel sets on something. Uh, but I actually wanted the third one the most. These are just extras. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I think these models definitely look better with these wheels versus those blanked off pieces of junk. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, it's not really my thing, but if, if you're into rolling, uh, these are really realistic. I had to shim uh, this Sephiro quite a bit. I had to put three pieces of plastic underneath the axle in the front and two pieces under the axle in the back. So it really just depends on what kind of model you know, you're going to be uh, modifying. Uh, these are clearly ma made for Hot Wheels, I think. But they would probably be the regular looking Hot Wheels, not the ones with the giant rear tires, right? Or, nor the tuned ones, which have really small diameter wheels. And actually, you know, it might be possible to fit them on a tuned one. Hold on. You know what? They actually will fit uh, the tunes. The tunes run, I think, around 10 millimeter, 10, 9.5. 10 millimeter wheels so you can just see if I stack this next to that it's only a fraction bigger it'll actually fill in the fender gap a little bit better but I'm not going to do that on this one uh, you know these are expensive wheels <laughs> so as much as I like my tuned cars uh, I'm really saving these T37s for something else I don't know what it is yet but uh, I gotta say they do look nice uh, on this tuned vehicle but nope Okay, so I, I think they're worth the money. It's just that you have to have a car you're willing to really modify. Uh, I, by choice, had to choose these two because it seems like most other brands do a pretty good job with their wheels. Only uh, the Aoshimas and the TLVs, I think, really... Uh, really want to have wheel swaps. But again, the TLV has a metal base they're riveted together. It would take a lot more work to uh, fit these wheels to them uh, because most of the classic TLVs also have really thin tires. Like, they're narrow, so you'd really have to shave out a lot of the base on a TLV. Maybe the modern, the Neos, TLV Neos, they'd be easier, but uh, I don't really collect those. Alright, well, hopefully you learned something by watching me uh, destroy these two to get these to fit. And uh, again, if you want to skip all that stuff, you could just use some poster putty, uh, but the wheels won't spin at all. But you could have camber. Alright, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next uh, modification video.